Hello. Hi. Um, let me just share my screen. Yeah. Yep, so, works like um, perfect. So, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Shir Karen. I will be presenting Agun today, which is a sensor company uh, for trees. Um, let me just start. Great. So, see you later in the Q&A. Great. Thanks. See all right. <laughs> um, introduce myself again. <laughs> I can get that. Um, so yes. So uh, I'll be presenting again today. I'll be presenting our data approach and how we use our AI methodology in uh, in the agricultural world. So I'll start. Um, let's see. All right. So the food system equation is quite simple, yet today it is starting to reach an impossible zone. The world population keeps on growing. Uh, the resources to grow trees do stay limited and humans take drastic measures just for uh, to answer the need of the actual food system. So it means um, whether it's from fertilizers to chemical use for spraying, for anything else, it is used on our trees constantly, on our food system constantly, in order to meet the the world population. Here in Agrint, we uh, we hope to impact this equation in order to use less drastic drastic measures and to keep our food system alive. So we're actually dealing with a natural problem. We're dealing with uh, pests that are part of the uh, trees biosystem, part of the biosystem in the field, especially boar pests. We, uh, our journey started with the red palm weaver, which is a boar pest in palms. And today we're starting to, um, to find solutions for different boar pests inside different kinds of trees. The damage uh, with boar pests is not visible to the eye. That means that uh, the damage will already be done once a human eye could actually see it. And if you want to treat it, you need to not to predict it, but to have very, very early information in order to actually treat it and actually save the tree. And because a tree is some sort of a, um, it's it's an investment at the end of the day. You plant a tree, you have to wait at least four years in order for, for it to give to give fruit, to give yield. And once the tree is actually hurting. And once uh, the damage has already been done, there's no, 100% um, of the yield will be damaged. So we're, we are uh, specifically, uh, we have a lot of um, knowledge in the boar pest um, area, but we are also going into the fruit flies, into the field flies, as we call it, um, area as well. What is happening today? So today, the common methodology for uh, for chemical spraying inside the field is a spray and pray methodology. It means 100% of the trees will be sprayed and the, the growers of spray will not know which trees are actually infested, hoping that the treatment will actually be useful for the trees that are infested. And there's no detection met method whatsoever to see which, which tree is the tree that is um, that is infested, and which is not. That means almost 93% of uh, the chemical used in the field for pests, I mean pesticides, will be used for nothing because there's no knowledge, there's no inside knowledge about what who is actually what trees actually is infested. And the chemical use is actually quite hard. So, they're sprayed by air and implement like the chemicals are sprayed by air and implemented inside the irrigation system and the those chemicals do stay in our land in our food and in our water there's a lot of uh methodology trying to prevent it in the legal system if you guys have heard of uh, farm to fork and trying to limit those um the chemical use down but there's no detection method for uh for pests inside the field yet and this is what we're trying to do here we're trying succeeding i would say uh to do here uh at agrin we're trying to revolutionize uh the agriculture world early pesticide pest detection of 
inf detection of infestation while and early and precise detection of infestation while reducing pesticide use. We're we we want to get give the growers the right information so they could actually use the actually use the the classic methods correctly and use them only when it's actually needed. So this is what we do. Agen gives growers the ability to listen to trees. And what we make is a, dis, it's a data data driven decision support system that helps the growers make the right decision and spray only where and when it's actually needed to spray at the trees. So um, let's talk a bit about the technology, a bit about the system. I'm going to go over those three main points, whether it's our sen sensors and system, AI out, AI out in the wild. At the end of the day, we are at the plantation at um, at the wild, and also the decision making that our system uh, can do. So this is our two main sensors. We have the IO tree and the IO trap, um, and of course we we also have our uh, our um, app and our web app. The sensors are both um, seismic based. That means that they listen to trees, but the information and the data that is collected is not like uh, a recording. It's more of a, it's it's a seismic data. Uh, they have the ability to monitor the plantation and the trees twenty four seven. They have a reliable and redundant communication system, which I will go over uh, in the next slide. And all that information is being sorted and. Uh, our decision decision support system tool is AI based. It's a lot of information. There's a lot of um, decision making methodology that our software does, uh, and this. And at the end of the day, what the information that is brought to the farmer is simple. It's easy to use in order for them to make the decision what to do in their field. Uh, our IO tree detection accuracy stands up to ninety ninety eight percent. That means that. Uh, we've had a lot of trials. We have a lot of trees. We have almost um, we have twenty thousand sensors out there at the moment. So they're all working, collecting data, and we know uh, what to say when the tree's actually infested or not infested. We've had a lot of uh, trees cut down as some sort of like a bet. Say we said it's infested, and um, the farmer would say, "Oh, it's not infested. I'm willing to take the tree down." And once they took it down, we did find. Um, Lava is inside the tree, which the, that is the um, that is the stage that they hurt the tree the most because this is what eats up um, the inside of the tree. So th this is our tech. Our uh, our sensors are a sensor per tree. Together they bring up a mesh network that uh, will um, stay redundant in the field will work for years um, on low Bluetooth battery and will communicate between one sensor to another, finding the fastest route to the gateway to the cloud in order to make the uh, calculations. Um, and the first um, the first time that our system makes the, um, the decision making, um, the, the first decision making out in the field is, um, that if one of the sensors will not be working, it will go through another route in order to actually, um, in order to actually, to always bring out the information back to the gateway, back to the uh, farmer's palm. The second time, um, with, and our, there's an AI methodology is actually the fact that we're out in the wild. There's, there could be a lot of, um, a lot of noise, a lot of data that could interface with our uh, with our with our software, and this is where uh, the powerful use of AI comes to our hand. Our software um, can detect between whether it's a pest or whether it's birds or farmers working in the field or tractor or wind or the tree growing. Everything has a noise, everything has a sound, and this is uh, what our system can defer between a point to another. So this is the second um, point and one of the most important points that AI is used and one of the most important uh, times that AI is used inside the world of agriculture. Second time is our actually decision making, and one of the most uh, crucial point that our software could um, actually tell if the treatment of a uh, chemical treatment of a tree is actually working. So for the first, 
when the software is installed, I don't know if you can see my uh, my um, mouse. So when the software is in, when the sensor is installed inside the tree for the for the beginning for a point of like almost two weeks, um, it will not have a status, and then will go between whether it's if the tree is clean or there is um, there there is a suspicious um, act something happening inside the tree. It'll take the system another couple of days to actually give it the best status it can, whether it'll go back, to, it, it will go to clean if the tree's actually clean, or it will go into red, which means it's infested. Now it, the decision lies in the farmer's hand uh, and they will, they will see if they want to treat the tree or not treat the tree uh, in chemical use. And once they treat the tree, uh, our system is able to actually provide the information to see if the treatment actually works. And you can see a classic graph here that we have. And um, this is the pesticide, this is the pest uh, behavior, whether it's a day or a night, and it has a lot of different measurements inside it. And once um, the farmer, uh, the grower decided to treat the tree, you would see the graph actually lowering down and uh, this way we can understand that there is no uh, there's no active uh, pest inside the tree uh, and it's quite amazing to give the farmers the feedback for uh, a product that they're, they're not buying from us they're not buying chemicals from us but they've been buying for years whether it's working or not working because today there's no no one would say oh, our treatment works 100 percent no one knows uh, how well do chemical treatment works because also the pests will like generation of generation of pests will actually learn how to live with uh, the chemical treatment. So this is uh, quite amazing to see if it works or if it doesn't work. I would love to go over the opportunity uh, of trees in the world. Uh, a lot of um, farmer growings um, are actually, whether it's seasons or yearly growing, and um, we see trees in an, as an investment. It takes four years. It depends on the tree to actually um, have fruits and have yields. So there's 40, uh, 46.6 billion agriculture trees out there. They actually have yield. That does not count the ornamental trees. And think about your favorite city, your favorite uh, summer cities. They all have palms or just a regular city would have uh, trees in it. And they're part of the big biosystem and does not include forests and forest reserves. And it does not even include uh, include um, trees that people grow in their, uh, in their backyard that are also part of the biosystem at the end of the day. When a city decides to treat their trees with chemicals, that does not mean 100% that the, the trees are not will not continue to be infested because there's a lot of um, per, like private trees and they're also part of the biosystem. And this is uh, a big part of the product. And this is why you put a sensor on every tree. And this is our biggest uh, dream and our biggest um uh, goal to actually monitor trees because they're here to stay. It takes time to grow a tree. It takes time for a tree to be uh, as big as we'd like it. And if we decide to invest in those and uh, this kind of growing, you have to know that um, you have to treat it correctly. Uh, what is used today as an alternative for a detection system? So there's dogs that are trained in order to um, to see to. Uh, find board pest. They're not. They're dogs, and they're not as accurate as we would like them to be. There's el electronic smell sensors um, that are actually uh, being developed, but we haven't seen them working as well. There's acoustic sensors that record, uh, just like a uh, regular recording. Like I would go and record a tree, and it's a lot of data. It's a lot of unnecessary data, and it's not as uh, reliable. And there's photo, photo analysis uh, of trees. Uh, which uh, works, but it's too late for that kind of information. Farmers, would, in order to really prevent chemical use, you will need the information a step before uh, before the eye can see, before photos will see the difference in the tree. And this this is the only way to actually uh, save the tree. Um, our traction, so we have just about two... 20,000 sensors out there all over the world, whether it's uh, whether uh, 
they're on palm trees just working, uh, whether we have new mango fields and avocado fields out there for research and development and even uh, um, different kind of trees that we're looking into. Uh, it's very exciting to see a lot of uh, a lot of trees being treated correctly. Um, and yeah, and of course, oh, I, I went back, I'm sorry. Uh, so yeah, this is us. We impact a lot of uh, also the um, the sustainable development goals. It's very important to us to be to be part of the movement that treats the earth correctly uh, and the trees correctly. And yeah, and that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, reach out privately. Follow us on LinkedIn. Follow and ask away. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Shio. So you're a tree carer, tree hugger, I understand. <laughs> and um, we already have one question for you, um, which is how many sensors or combination of sensors are needed for your data model to cover 10 hectares of tree land for high accuracy prediction detection model and so on? That's a very specific question. Um... It really does depend. It depends on the trees. Uh, it depends on the use of the trees. We, for our uh, bore, uh, bore um, sensors, we use a tree for every, a sensor for every tree. So it depends on how many trees are actually planted in the ten hectares of uh, of tree. This is uh, this is what we found our best way to actually stay with our prediction with our um eight with our ninety eight percent prediction as high. And with the IO trap, it also it depends. We when someone decides to buy the system, we plan it for them in the best um, in the best way possible. How economical is the plan? Once you save, uh, I'm sorry, I just took the questions. Um, yeah, maybe we have time for one more question, but then we can. Right. Uh, once you save ninety seven percent of the treatment, it actually um, it becomes very economical. With our uh, with our plan, we have a yearly subscription. Our uh, our sensors uh, cost a lot less than the actual chemical treatment does. Um, at at the end of the day, it is very important not just to take not just to uh, bring down the chemical use, but to actually stay economical for the growers. So we we do everything that is needed, um, and. Um, you're welcome to uh, reach out to me for Egypt and I will contact you with uh, anyone you will need. Um, yeah. Great. That's it. Um, then thanks again, Shia. And yeah, thanks again for your talk. And yeah, as, as she said, you can always reach out to her either on B2Match. Yeah, I think that's the best way. And uh, with the... Uh, with this, with the meeting systems that you guys have, I'm here all day tomorrow and today. Feel free to reach out. Um, yeah. Okay. Good. Perfect. And yeah, also th thanks a lot from also from my side. Uh, perhaps uh, since I think we have time for one more question because sure. I'm just you know flew in. It's sure. uh, it, it's the the last one. Um, so I can read it out. Have you found the tendency of the infection bug to spared to be spared to non-sprayed trees? If yes, what is remedy? To non-sprayed trees, um, I can understand that. I think more specifically privately. But the thing is, with let's say the red palm weaver that we've been uh, looking at for a while, we haven't found kind of a tendency of the bug. Um, this is why we carry out our our method of a sensor for every tree. Uh, this is why we want to detect every single kind of tree. Um, we know that at the end of the day, for the spraying part, the um, the the beetles will live with it, and this is what we're trying to prevent. We're trying to limit the chemical use. Spray only, only, only when it's needed, only when it's infected. And that way, um, that way we will uh, the chemical effectiveness will continue, and we will have to use less of it, uh, which is very important to us. It's just 
it's at the end of the day taking the entire food system or the city system uh because we do have uh, trees in the city in the city and actually optimizing it in the best way po possible thanks perfect thanks a lot all right great, <laughs> great. so so much for the questions yeah, yeah, we can interact with you on, on B2Match it if there is any additional information you would like us to share from Agrid, uh, just send it to us so we will disseminate it either by sending out a mail to the participants afterwards or, you know, in this in this CNN style or Fox News style tickers uh, that you see below, Yeah, you know, depending on, on which side. You're more than welcome <laughs> to follow us on LinkedIn and connect me personally and anything, whether it's for uh, the actual system or any other questions uh, or collaboration opportunities that you guys might think of. Great.